So Raikou is not nearly as good as it used to be, but looking at its stat spread, people are absolutely sleeping on this thing with that offense, speed tier, and even strong special bolt. It can set up with Calm Mind to boost special attack and special defense, and Stab Thunderbolts hit like an absolute truck. It's somehow one of the very few Pokemon that still gets access to Scald for great coverage and burn chance, and even Fairy Terra Blast always comes in clutch. There's no doubt that Power Creep has kind of ruined our dude, but it can still be insane. Look, for being a legendary beast, Raikou is very slept on competitively right now, and it's still actually extremely good, and that's this type of stuff we like to highlight. If you're into that kind of thing, make sure you hit that subscribe button. I'm on my way to 400k, you'll never miss any videos, and it'll be a good time. Now with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match. Alright, so my opponent is going to go ahead and lead off with the Lava Frog. That tells me that this fella is here to set up some Stealth Rock, and it's just kind of going to be, you know, a lead Heatran. As I have the Lycanroc, I, as much as I want to just punch this thing in the face with a close combat, I decided I should probably set up my own Stealth Rock here. Definitely just going to help out in the long run. And this Lycanroc is here as just a dedicated lead to get up rocks, potentially get knocked down to a Focus Sash, and then go for annoying shit like Endeavor and Accelerate Rock with priority. So, I get up the Stealth Rock as they decide to bring in the Landorus. But he's just standing on air, and I don't know exactly what this thing wants to do. Now, if they lead Heatran, it was probably there for Rock, so I imagine this is probably going to be like a Scarf uh, Landorus here. So, not wanting to be knocked down to my Sash, also knowing that they don't have any hazards yet. I can keep my Focus Sash intact by just switching right into the Hate Disc. This thing is the anti-love disc, because everybody hates this thing. But this Alomomola, it serves a pretty important role on this team in being the punching bag of the squad. I can switch this thing into literally anything, and that's because I have defensive and special defensive investment with an assault vest. So as they decide to pivot into the Latios here, I'm thinking I'm fine. This thing, it can't really hurt me, and as they end up going for the Terra Electric, I'm like, okay, that's actually still mostly fine. It doesn't... I, I, I'm assault vested. It's probably just going to have a nice little special attack here, and I can take that all day. So... As they end up going for the Terra Blast here, I'm like, yep, that vest is going to come in handy because I'm able to live, but not only that, I can then fire off a Mirror Coat, which is amazing because then that's just going to take care of the Latios, and with that, down goes the Terra. So that worked out pretty nicely. Latios is a threat, and now the thing is just resting in peace with his freaking light bulb, looking like a doofus. So now with the Revenge Switch, they decide to go into the Landorus once again. I figure I'm kind of fine if I get knocked out here, and as they actually end up going for the knockoff, that is fine. It does get rid of my Assault Vest, but it's like, hey, I, I got my use out of that bad boy. And as I go for the flip turn, it is going to reveal that it is in fact the Hisuian Zorark. So, the disguise has worn off, and with that little pivot, I actually also get the ability to regenerate some health, and that's why this thing is called Hate Disc. It just does not die. So. With that, I have a good bit of momentum on the slow pivot, being able to go into whatever I like. So I decide to bring in the Raikou, thinking that I can easily set up Calm Minds in this thing's face. And I have a really good speed tier with versus what they have left. So with that, Calm Mind is going to make my offenses much stronger versus everything they have. And they just decide to go for another knockoff here. It's going to get rid of my leftovers, which is fine. Didn't even get to take a bite out of our damn leftovers, which is just always heartbreaking. However, I'm just going to go for another Calm Mind. At plus two special attack, Raikou is actually pretty insane. And with that 115 speed, we don't even need we don't even need much help. So now they decide to go for the Taunt. It does turn out, however, you are slower. Obviously, I have a little bit more speed with that Timid Nature. And that Taunt is going to come a little bit too late. Because now at plus two, I can absolutely roast and toast him with a Thunderbolt. And that's going to be a dead Zorak. So more of a more of like a supporty kind of kind of Zorak there, rather than like a nasty plot like Sweeper. But at this point now they can go back into the Heatran. So Heatran's probably thinking, hey, maybe I have a decent time here. I'm just a frog, chilling in the sun. Sure glad that there's not any hot water on me. But boom, I can hit him with the Scald, and at plus two special attack, that is going to be able to take care of the Heatran. I don't know. I, also, I don't know if that thing even is a frog, but someone said that one time, and I can't unsee it. So Heatran's just it's a lava toad. Anyway. Now they can go into the real Landorus, and so here's the thing. Intimidate doesn't work, obviously doesn't matter, but if they bring in Landorus on this matchup, that means that this thing is definitely Choice Scarf, and it's going to be able to outspeed me, and an Earthquake is certainly something that's going to stop our Sabertooth fella over here. So, I'm going to actually go for the defensive Terra. I'm going to bust out the Terra Fairy, because now I'm a kitty with a heart on my head, which is amazing, but also, now I'm no longer weak to that Earthquake, 
And I'm thinking that should allow me to live this. And as they go for that earthquake, I live with one HP, which is the most clutch thing ever. Paired with the Scald, the super effective hit, able to take care of the Landorus. And that got a little closer than I kind of thought. It lived one HP live is always just so clutch and actually amazing. And now Raikou is looking real good because as they have two Pokemon left, it's going to be the Milotic who comes in. They don't have the option for a defensive Terra. And the Thunderbolt just absolutely destroys him. And with the final Mon left, it's going to be the Whimsicott. So the good thing is I am faster than Whimsicott. And Raikou has gone on an absolute tear. You let this thing set up Calm Minds, and it's absolutely a monster. There's so many different ways to use this. Even a spec set with like a fast Volt Switch, it's extremely fun. So as they go into Whimsicott, they actually end up going for the Leech Seed here. Just because with Prankster, it allows them to go first. But it doesn't really matter because I can now just fire off a nice little Terra Blast here. I will get my HP sapped by that Leech Seed if it doesn't kill. It actually ends up living, which tells me this thing has definitely some bulk. He's a little little cotton fella over there. On it, Whimsicott is also extremely annoying. Anything with Prankster just grinds my gears. However, I do die to the Leech Seed, which is kind of steals my last health. Like I was hanging on by a damn thread, and you got to take that from me. First, they take my leftovers before I take a bite. And then they take my one single HP. So with that, I am in a pretty good spot because <laughs> this is the last Mon left. And you know what I'm going to give it to? I'm going to give it to the freaking gumshoes. I'm working with, yeah, I don't know. I, sometimes I cook a little too hard, man. I don't know. I have a young goose here who is Choice Scarf and can outspeed, but they just decide to go for the, the, the little <laughs> last ditch effort lead seed here. But with my hands behind my back, I'm going to body slam the hell out of him from the top ropes. And that is going to take care of Whimsicott. So not only did Raikou go on a tear, but also we get to see Young Goose kill something for the first time maybe ever. And that is going to be the end of the match. So I thought that was just a goofy game. Raikou going on a little bit of a tear. However, that's going to bring us into match number two. I am now obligated to ask if you've made it this far into the video, you should probably just hit that like button because it does help out the channel. And for whatever reason, YouTube, they like when you do it and also me. So with that, let's go ahead and jump into the match where this guy has a very scary team. So this time, Speed Racer and his helmet over here is going to lead off with a Glamora. Now, I'm kind of afraid of this thing as I lead Lycanroc. It's just kind of my dedicated lead at this point. The main problem with this matchup is that, like, yeah, he can go for an Earth Power and knock me down to one, which I can then endeavor and get him down to one. But I really don't want to touch this thing with a physical attack. I want to try to avoid getting Toxic Spikes set up on my side pretty much at all costs. And that's kind of the main goal here. As they do go for the Earth Power, I actually surprisingly am able to live it without the Sash. And while I could go for that endeavor, instead, I'm going to switch into everybody's favorite fish. I'm going to go into the Alomomola, just because I know that I can take attacks from this thing all day being assault vested. And then I can just throw some scalds around at it without having to hit it on the physical side. So as they actually end up going for the energy ball, it's going to be a nice move because it does hit me for a little bit more damage. But again, we, we're out here just the thickest fish, literally of all time. And as I want to try to predict a switch and go for a flip turn, is not really risking it. So I decided to just go for that scald. And it turns out they're going to bring in the Dragapult. The worst father ever is over here, ready to launch his children right at me. But as I get the Scald Burn, I'm thinking, hey, that actually could be real nice, depending on if this is going to be a physical attacking Dragapult. And the main problem about this little ghostly fella is that you never, you just never know what this thing is going to be built like. And as it ends up going for the Thunder Wave, that does at least give me a little bit of intel. You really just need like a turn to see what it's going to do. Is it going to set up screens? Is it going to be a dragon, like physical attacker? Is it going to end up being a special attacker with specs or something? As they go for the Thunder Wave, I'm able to hit it with a Play Rough, which is basically on here to just kind of do that to dragons. But also, I know that now he's going to go for the Hex, and it is going to be a special attacker. So the Burn doesn't really end up helping me out too much. And at least, however, Paralyzed Dilemma Mola doesn't really care. And I'm able to eat it up because of that Assault Vest. And at this point now, I get that Flip Turn. So... As I'm looking at this thing, I have a lot of different options that I can bring in here. None of them feel super great to me yet, and I don't really want to kind of use up a setup here. So I actually decided to bring in Lycanroc. I'm able to freely come in because they don't have rock set up. And I'm going to go ahead and try to make a prediction here. I expect them to ex expect me to go for an Acceleroc with that priority to take it out. So predicting the switch, I'm going to go for the Endeavor instead. And it's, it turns out they actually don't switch out, and that doesn't affect it because it's a ghostly boy. And... That then allows them to kill me with a U-turn. So that actually does tell me a little bit more about this thing. It's going to be more of a support dragon pole, or at least defensive, because that means it wasn't full spe uh, max speed. So the U-turn does take care of me, and Lycanroc goes down, but it's kind of like it wasn't going to do much in the remainder of this match anyway, and I'm kind of fine with that. As Dragapult's basically used up at this point, 
I also get to see what they want to bring in here. Lycan Rock going down there on the U-turn basically allows me a free matchup, and we take those all damn day. And you know who loves a free matchup is our piss-colored friend over here. I decided to go into Lucario because I know that they probably baited into going for an Earth Power here, and I can actually end up busting out the Terra Fighting. Now, that's going to allow me to take the hit and then also potentially go for a Nasty Plot. It's kind of a cover play here going for this Terra. First of all, I don't super have a need for going for Terras in the back, so I decided to bust this out on the chance that they go for the attack. I honestly expected them to switch out. Uh, expecting me to go for, you know, a steel type attack, but it turns out they actually just go for that earth power And it's just gonna do a bit too much damage to the point where I don't have a way to really hit that Dragapult And I'm like, well shit, so I go for the flash cannon at least it is gonna be able to take care of the Glamora However, the Terra on that turn probably wasn't really worth it, but in the end I didn't really have great options it tucked in the back anyway, so it felt like it was worth it I have the fist on my head and sadly now Dragapult gets to come in for free and this fella is more than likely going to be faster. Even with not much speed investment, he's going to be quite quick. So, does end up dropping a Draco Meteor that is going to take care of the Lucario. Which means the special Luc Lucario Skywalker is not going to be getting any sweeps today. So, if I was able to get through that Dragapult with the ability to have that plus two and then extra st stab on vacuum waves, the thing was looking crazy. Except now we've got ourselves a little change of plans, and I decide I'm gonna actually end up bringing Big Booty Judy in. I know this thing has a special attack drop, and if I can boost some speed on this fellow with a Trailblaze, we are in a really good spot. I'm also mostly banking on the fact that they want to try to conserve this thing and switch it out to have a fast Draco Meteor later, rather than go for that Thunder Wave, but as you see, they actually just go for that T-Wave, and that is kind of unfortunate. Being paralyzed obviously doesn't help my cause trying to boost up with, with the Trailblaze here, which is fine. I am at least able to take care of the Dragapult. That thing is annoying. And while they do have some pretty big threats left, I, I, I feel like I still have some moves here. So, in comes the Chi Yu. And this goldfish, the snack that smiles back, is... He doesn't look like much, but this thing is an absolute nuke button. It literally... Little fishy bastard is unfair. So the initial plan was to be able to go for an Endure. That would then be able to pop a Lychee Berry, boosting my attack, and then also allowing me to have a boosted Acrobatics to kill it. But being paralyzed kind of ruins that, so I can just decide to go into the Aloma Mola, who did regenerate some health, and the Overheat, while that generally is a nuke button, it is in fact going to basically do nothing <laughs> to my fish. I'm the superior fish over here, boy. They call me Big Pink. So, I imagine they probably switch out, and that's why Flip Turn is an amazing option on the Aloma Mola here, because as they decide to go into the Rotom Wash, this thing is over here ready to wash, just eager to wash my clothes, and this thing is... Always annoying, at least I'm able to get the pivot, and then as I'm looking at it, Serena would have been really nice, is kind of the main reason why I wanted to set it up, because with that Endure play would have been super, super nice. However, Raikou is actually looking extremely nice about now, as I'm able to bring this thing in, they don't really have any offensive options against me, and that is the perfect option to be able to set up a Calm Mind. If you're in on a special attacker that you know that they can't do much to you, with that Calm Mind setup, you're in such a great spot. So. They decide to bring in the Landorus here. It is going to intimidate and not attack, drop my attack because we, we're focused the hell up over here, which it doesn't matter, but it's always kind of fun. And I do get up that Calm Mind here. So I guess I probably actually should have conserved the Terra here the same way we did to <laughs> not die to an Earthquake. But it turns out this one is, in fact, not going to be rocking the Choice Scarf in a Scald. It's going to burn him with a nice little, little hot water. So that takes care of the Landorus. Honestly... We're just out here killing Landruses today, and that's exactly what we live for. So, again, one of the other scary things they have left is going to be the Iron Valiant. This thing looks and comes in looking chrome as hell, but he is from the future. It also has the Quark Drive, and it's actually going to be Special Attack, which means this thing's more than likely going to be modest. And if that's the case, we actually outspeed here, and Sabretooth Tither Tiger is out here zooming. I'm able to then go for a nice little boosted Thunderbolt. That does take care of it, and we are not getting slashed by your crazy scythe today. So... They have two Pokemon left at this point. It's going to be the Chi Yu along with that washing machine, and we eat both of them. As Chi Yu comes in, it does have the Beads of Ruin, which doesn't necessarily matter. And uh, most of the time, I feel like this thing is actually faster than it is, but it's actually base 100 speed, and my timid, fast Tiger Ass is going to be faster with that 115, and I can then just take care of it with a Thunderbolt. So down goes the Chi Yu. It was not able to click its delete button on anything today. And uh, final mine going to be the Rotom Wash, who, especially with a Calm Mind boost, we just have special defense and special attack. I can finish them off with the Thunderbolt easily, but they're just going to go ahead and run, and that is going to be the end of the match. So, 
that was just a fun game. Definitely some misplays, but you can kind of see my thought process on just trying to get some of my mons to work in situations. And Raikou just comes in clutch. And the thing is just, it's fun to use. I, I love that it gets scald. I don't know why it does get scald. Is there some type of lore around the reason why this thing can just summon hot water? I have no idea, but I'm all here for it. And that's going to do it. Thank you guys very much for watching. I do appreciate all the support. You guys are amazing. Make sure to hit the like button and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time. Peace out.